Greetings, everyone. This is Pastor Tandre Yoni from Johannesburg, South Africa. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you on my online program, Ebizwa Uhambo Luami Nungulu Nungulu, a program wherein I share my life stories with the world. Today, I would like us to talk about becoming an oasis at all times. Becoming an oasis at all times. When you become it's a process and it's a present continuous tense. An oasis is a place of calmness in a in a time of a turbulence. Is a place of being at peace in times of hardships, challenges. Then you are at peace. That is when you become an oasis. Then at all times, at all times. <laughs> okay. I'm tempted to start sharing my story now, but just before then, let me just read scripture. Because, you know, when we talk about at all times, Isaiah 26, verse 3, it reads thus, 18. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You will keep. You will keep any person whose mind will stay in you because that person trusts you. He will keep. God keeps us in perfect peace. God keeps us. You know, the oasis, it, perfect peace. Remember, and imagine being in perfect peace. Perfect and no headache, no pain. Hey, you know, Perfect, where nothing missing and nothing is broken. Many years ago, I used to know this perfect peace. Many years ago, I was I became born again, or really born again, because I became born again a whole many, many other times in my life. But the final time was in 2002, and during that time, I man, Umuntu was really happy. I was, I was very, I was a happy person. I was a joyous person. I had peace in my heart. My body was healthy. My skin was glowing every day. Like literally, I was happy every day. And people will think this because being in a mall, I didn't have money then. Namanji, I'm still praying to have money, but I didn't have money. But I had peace. I had perfect peace. I, I was you a joyous occasion for me daily. My life was peaceful. Then life happened. Life happened, challenges became an order of the day, broken relationships, pain in my heart, Oops, allowed bitterness, I worry, fear, consumed my heart and my life. You know, everything was just a, a mess every day. It, it was like a drama day in and day out over the years. I remember there was a time the Holy Spirit showed me the state of my heart. It was bleeding. It was broken. It was hurting. And it because I had issues in me, in fights. Jeal but the Bible talks about jealousy. A jealousy is the spirit that destroys a human being and destroys families and, and nationalities. Peace, it, it's, it's very foreign in that spirit or in that land. But when you talk about becoming an oasis, it's when you become that peace in the time of a turmoil, of a turbulence. So I used to know peace. I, I that time I had started a company. I started to make a human development strategy. Then now it's Project J. Um, in twenty twenty oh four, I had believed God for greatness. I started doing the motivational sessions. Everything was just moving swiftly by faith. By faith. Yes, I did not have money. Because the Bible says you must seek first the kingdom and its righteousness. And all these things are added. However, in my way of life, I became distracted. I allowed the voices of other human beings to tell me that this thing it does not work. I allowed other challenges that I faced in life to distract me. I allowed broken relationships to hurt me even further. Fear crept in. Worry became an order of the day. 
Presently, I even suffer from a skin condition because of the challenges and issues that I've experienced over the years. I had forgotten to be peaceful. I had forgotten to have that joyous, a peaceful life that I once knew. So the question I had to ask myself is what really happened to me? What happened? The, the beauty that was inside of me, inside out. You know when peace radiates outwardly, that used to be my life. I anybody. I was just beautiful inside out. And you know, peace was just me, it was my anchor at that time. So I had to ask myself that Batu, what really happened? I need that life again. Hence I'm saying becoming. Becoming an oasis. When we go back to our scripture reading for today, it says he keeps in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on thee because they trust him. Would it be possible that I stop stop trusting God even if I was born again and being um now I'm a pastor, but then I was not? But would it be possible? How much trust do we really trust in this way, the way that we read daily? The father that we pray to, how much trust do we put on him? The promises that he gives you. Margaret, I will keep in perfect peace. His word has to be in you. Because as you read the word, it's a promises. There are promises, there are warnings. Because the Bible says, there's a part of the word of God is used for training, teaching, rebuking, and correction. There's a part where God will correct you. There's a part when he gives you a promise. And his promises are yes and amen. His promises are true. But most of us, we shift like I have done over the years. But now I'm saying to myself and to the world, Tandi Wenyun, you used to be at peace at all times. At all times. At all times. That does not mean life has no challenges. That does not mean our hardships are thrown at us daily. That's a reality. Um, I may be talking to you, maybe you are going through a divorce. Maybe you, you, have, you have been just kicked out of your home that you've stayed in for years. Maybe you have just uh, had somebody that you loved died on you. Maybe you are retrenched from work. Maybe there's just pain in the inside of your experience, rape. In this world, there are just challenges. God, it, Joseph once said that in this world, You'll have challenges, but be of cheer that I have conquered the world. So basically, we are challenged at all sides, but God is ever present in our lives. So it's a decision that we make, which you know what? Let's lean on this God. Let's seek this uh, kingdom. Let's seek this Father. Let's seek the peace that surpasses all understanding. Because he says he will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind has stayed on thee. I have decided I am choosing, Lord, I need to even more. I won't say go back because you don't go back, we go forward. I need to experience that peace, that love, that joy, that skin healed, that healing daily. I want to see the glory of the Lord daily. Perfect peace. It's a declaration. I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus that I will, I'm becoming an oasis. The peace that I once knew in the midst of challenges, in the midst of a turbulence, in the midst of a turmoil, I am becoming an oasis. Wenong Lalele, won't you want to, don't you want to join me in this decision? See, at peace in the midst of challenges. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Already yesterday, even this morning, I was scolding at somebody. Then that tells you it's still going to be a process, but I am determined. I have made up my mind. Obviously, I'm not going to do this. It's, you know when the Bible says, uh, all power has been given. And it's not my power. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. The great I am himself. He's going to teach me, retrain me if needs be. So who wants to join me in this walk with becoming an oasis? 
we really need to be peaceful in these turbulence times. You need to be peaceful inside your heart, in your mind. You need to be peaceful at home, at work. You need to be peaceful even in the community. Make a decision that you're becoming an oasis. Whether whether it is you, you've experienced um, pain in your heart, you, if, whether you've experienced pain at work, make a decision that you are becoming an oasis. And only Jesus Christ is your helper. Uncle Suchesu, he's a prince of peace. So now, to whoever who has never received him as their Lord and 